talking about budgeting leads to another subject, and that is what we do in our giving for God out of that total package of money that we have. Uh, how do you feel about tithing, and where is hmm. that in your understanding of the New Testament? Well, tithing is an interesting issue uh, that, that is very controversial among a lot of people. And what, what, what I do is I, uh, I turn to 2 Corinthians 8. Take a look at 2 Corinthians 8. Uh, and if you know 2 Corinthians 8, you, you'll say to yourself, but that's not about tithing. But as you've noticed, that doesn't keep me from going to a passage. Um, <laughs> 2 Corinthians 8 <laughs> starts by saying, and now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Now just contemplate. That's an unbelievable paradox. This statement is so rich. They didn't just give according to their ability, he says. They gave beyond their ability. And Entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing the service to the saints, which they were taking an offering for the poor people in Jerusalem. And they're begging for the privilege. Why are they begging for it? Well, it implies because people are telling them, you shouldn't be giving. You're worse off than they are, or you're as bad off as they are. We're not asking you to give. They say, no, don't rob us of the privilege of giving. I've been around poor people and giving is one of the greatest joys in their life. And they give the small amount, like the widow's mite, and they're giving a much larger proportion, often, you know, than, than we give. Why do I turn to that passage? Well, the reason is because my argument for tithing is this. First, do I believe that as New Testament Christians, we're under the law? No, I do not. I do not. But I also believe that there were things in the law where the small details we're not under, but for instance, is it a good idea that we would have a day of rest? I think it's a very good idea. God built it into his creation that was way before the law. Okay, so there are certain things in the law that are still valid, and even if we're not under them as law, they're still a good idea. So what I do with tithing is, I call tithing the, the training wheels of giving. It's just like my, uh, two of my grandsons just in the last two or three months got off the training wheels. And it's liberating, you know? But they'd never have learned to ride a bike if they didn't have training wheels because it would, that first step would always have been too much for them. So the first step is the training wheels. That's that extra help that you need. That's what tithing is, I think, for a New Testament Christian. It just gets you into a habit and a discipline. And habits and discipline are not bad things. They're good things. And leads you on to giving and higher levels of giving. And I believe with the amount that God has entrusted to most of us, very honestly, I think we can go well, well beyond the tithe. Now, I'm not saying everybody. I'm just saying, but I... Here's my question to people when they argue against tithing. And I, I mean, you get unbelievable letters from people who are just so angry that you would even consider suggesting that it might be good for a young couple to start tithing just to learn how to give. And it's like, you are under the condemnation of Satan because you're putting people under the law. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, if God did it with his old covenant people and it was good for them, could it just be a starting place? See, in the New Testament, you have far more radical giving. You have people liquidating their assets and giving away and doing all this kinds of stuff. But here's the question I ask people. If God required of the poorest Israelite, the 10%, there were actually three tithes, and one was every third year, it added up 23%. But let's just go with the 10% that went to the priests and Levites that would be, let's say, roughly equivalent to us giving to our local fellowships that have spiritual leaders and things that are paid for there. So 10%, all right? Just take the 10%, the Levitical tithe. All right, if God required that tithe of the poorest Israelite who had not seen the redemptive work of Christ on the cross and was not indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, do you suppose 
that his beginning standard for New Testament Christians living in a far wealthier society, having seen the redemptive work of Christ and having the indwelling Holy Spirit, do you think God's standard for us would be lower than it was? For those people, I think that's a legitimate question regardless of what you believe about tithing. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that makes many people angry, but every time they make biblical arguments, I say to them, look, don't tithe. I don't think you should tithe. I think you should start at 11%. Because then, or 12, feel free. Choose a number. Doesn't have to be 10 but you know what? I wouldn't want to stand before the judgment seat of Christ having lived in the wealthiest country in human history and having been redeemed by Jesus and having the Spirit of God within me and make my case at the judgment seat for why I couldn't give as much as the poorest Israelite. 